for church. Good morning. Okay, you guys ready? Oh, Bibles. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Good morning, Pastor Bruce Nenny, on behalf of Zion Lutheran Church here in Detroit Lakes. Beautiful Savior Lutheran Church. All set? Yep. Okay. Good job. Hi, before my family and I watched the church service, we usually grab a blanket and a drink, and we watched on the couch while trying to calm down my baby sister, and I hope y'all are doing well. Bye! Watch church, Nashi? Church! Church! So, before church, a lot of times, we gotta start the coffee maker, we gotta chase down the toddler, most days we just sit on the couch and listen to the service. We have our beautiful cross up on the wall, and we kind of all just pile in together, and most of the time we listen to our church service on our cell phone, and we can also put it up on our TV for all of us to watch if there's um, video to watch. Say hi, Nashi. Say hi. Good morning, everybody. Sarah Martinson here. This is where we like to worship, right here on our nice living room comfy couch. One special thing we make sure we do before worship starts is, as you can see, we make sure all the hymnals are in everybody's individual places, and we make sure coffee's ready. What's one thing that you do? Good morning. Welcome to Zion Lutheran Church. We're pleased to have you with us worshiping today. Uh, we're blessed to be able to do this via technology. This is also Mother's Day, so if you happen to be with your mother, give her a big old hug and let her know how much you appreciate her. Uh, the service will be uh, viewed today, and our opening hymn is All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name.
Having praised the precious name of Jesus, we now hear the words that were spoken over us in baptism when he claimed us as our own. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the confession of sins. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of our sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we're gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise and receive his gifts, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in, in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue our worship with the song of praise following hearing God's grace who forgives us. We sing, my hope is built on nothing less. be with you and also with you and let us pray O God you made the minds of your faithful to be of one will grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise that among the many changes of this world our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found through Jesus Christ your son our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God now and forever amen we continue our worship with the readings of Holy Scripture. Our first reading for today comes from Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs 31, 10 through 31. An excellent wife who can find. She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and she will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax, and she works with willing hands. She is like the ships of a merchant. She brings her food from afar. 
She rises while she is yet while it is yet night and provides food for her household and portions for her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hand she plants a vineyard. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her, her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the, to the poor and she reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household are clothed in scarlet. She makes bed coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates and when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and she sells them. She delivers sashes to the merchants. Strength and dignity are her clothing. And she laughs at a time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and she teaches of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and she does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, also praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her work praise her in the gates. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading for today comes from 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 2 through 10. Like newborn infants long for pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come into him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house, to be holy, a holy priesthood, and to offer spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For the scripture says, Behold, I am laying in Zion a foundation, a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become its cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. You are chosen. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, that you would proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Next up in our service is the, the children's message by Pastor Guy Roberts. Hello, kids. Do you know what today is? Well, it's three things today. Today is the day the Lord has made. We can celebrate. It's sunshiny right now as I record this. There's birds chirping. What an amazing day today is. The second thing today is, is a chance for you to worship the Lord. We get to do that here today. And for that we say amen. And then the third thing that today is, is Mother's Day. That's right, Mother's Day. Every single person that has been born into this world has a mother. And of all the things to be thankful for, that's got to be one of the best. In fact, when I was growing up, I would say if you were to ask me to rank the best things that were in my life, I would have ranked my mom number two. That's right. I would have ranked her number two. Of all the things in the world, she would have been the second best thing in my life. Now you might be wondering why I would say the second best thing and not the first best thing. But the only other person, the only other person better in my life than my mom 
is Jesus. When I was growing up, I would have said that. Now that I'm an adult and married, I would have to say that my mom is number three, right behind Jesus and my wife. So, as we think about life, of all the things that we experience in life, and we think, hmm, what are the best things? Well, today, on Mother's Day, we give thanks to God for one of the best things in our life, our mothers. You know, God has given you a gift at any time, at any point of your life, you can make your mom's heart get huge. All you have to do is take your arms, to spread them out wide, to wrap them around her, and say, I love you, mom, and thank the Lord for her in prayer. I want you to do that today with your mom. Thank the Lord for her. Pray with her and thank God for your mom. Give her a big old huge hug and tell her you love her. Usually we end our children's lessons with prayers. Today, I want you to do the prayer. Could you do that, kids? Could you lead a prayer with your mom and thank God for her? I think you can. I want you to hit pause and I want you to do that. And then I want you to have a blessed week remembering how blessed you are to have a mom. The Lord's richest blessings be with you this week. And hi, Mom. I love you. Our gospel lesson for today comes from John chapter 14. John 14, verses 1 through 14. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so... Would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come again also and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. But Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still don't know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, Whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. And greater works than these he will do because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. If you have a hymnal, please turn to page 192 in your hymnal as we make a profession of our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our next song for today, the song of the day, is The Church is One Foundation, 
Hymn 644, The Church is One Foundation. And we pray. Gracious Father, we praise you for this day, a chance again to hear your word, to gather while we are apart, truly one in your name, in our homes, in the parking lot, and to be able to hear your word, your precious word, for you are the foundation of our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On September 13th, 1959, Apollo 11 landed on the moon. On November 22nd, 1963, President Kennedy was assassinated. On April 30th, 1975, the Vietnam War ended. In 1991, the Cold War ended. Tear down this wall. And on September 11th, 2001, Terrorists brought down the World Trade Center in New York, two towers leveled. These are a few moments in history that have changed the course of our lives, our outlook on lives, and the way our lives and the way things would go for the future. And now, here in year 2020, you and I are experiencing the pandemic, the crisis of COVID 19, which will forever change the way we view the world and the way we handle things come at us, both as the church and in all of our lives. 
This weekend, for example, we're worshiping here online, on the radio, in our parking lot, leading worship with a camera, or out of the back of a U-Haul. That's right. Now, I'm pretty certain that if 10 weeks ago I had said, guess what? We're closing this building down. We're locking the doors. We're going to turn our sanctuary into a recording studio. And for months, you're going to worship with us online and on the radio from your homes. And that's what church will be like for us. I bet if I had said that 10 weeks ago to you, you would have said he's lost his mind. And many of us would have grumbled saying things like, this isn't church. But now, not only are we doing these things, but we're eager and we're thankful to be able to gather together in the parking lot to listen to our service on the radio, not necessarily together like normal, but to just be in the same space. It almost feels like a holiday. You know, I used to, I've said something many times in Bible study and in discipleship hour, I've talked about this. And every time I bring this up, I get this, this look, kind of like, a, hmm, I'm not sure about that. You know, I'm not sure I quite agree with that kind of look. And this is what I've said. I've said, I'm preparing for life in my ministry as a pastor, in my lifetime, to have to do church where there are no buildings. You know, we're, we live in a place and a time where it wouldn't take too much to get to that point. And so I'd always thought it would come when the government uh, removes our tax-exempt status as a church. That's kind of what I've always thought would be the stepping stone towards us. For many churches wouldn't be able to afford the taxes and to run and to operate and would find a different way to do it. Who would have thought a virus would do this, would close the doors of churches, would bring us into our homes and in a completely different way of worshiping to a place where within just 10 weeks, this is how we're doing it. Because if you think about it, it's pretty incredible. For eight weeks now, we've been worshiping in some format like this. We even did this over Easter. People who are outspoken, outspoken in their anti-technology have dipped their toes in the water in the deep end of this world. Why? Why would we do this? The truth is we desire to be with Jesus. When you strip all of it away, when you take the building away, when you take the traditions away, when you take our expectations of what church is supposed to be like away, you reveal what has always been there, what is the only thing that matters, and that's Jesus Christ. In our First Peter reading today, he is described as the cornerstone. And that's what he is, of a spiritual house, a people of God who gather around his word, not limited to a building or a confined space. The temple curtain has been ripped and we now come to him to receive his gifts, to be his people. It just took an extraordinary event like this pandemic to really bring it out again. We've always known this, we've heard this, we've learned this, but to bring it out, to magnify it, to help us see exactly what is important, Jesus Christ, our cornerstone, which is why we say things like, he is risen, he is risen indeed, alleluia. Jesus was described in something I studied this week as the hinge, which means a hinge is something that everything kind of pivots on. And I like this distinction because in Jesus, there's everything before Jesus and there's everything after Jesus. There is the world broken and cursed before Jesus and there is the world redeemed, awaiting for him to return and to restore all things. There is both before creation and the after creation. And then in you and I, there are both people who were broken and lost not even sure what to look for with no ability to find it. And then there are the people after Jesus. And those people are redeemed. Those people live in grace and mercy. 
You know, in this first Peter passage that we read here as our second reading today, you and I are described and Jesus teaches us who we are in him, for him to be our cornerstone and for us to live after Jesus, to be those who dwell in Jesus means something for you and I. And I want you to read this with me. It says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. I want you to do something for me. I want you to look at the people that you're gathered with today. And I want you to say, that thing we just read, that's you. Go ahead and point and point out that that's you, you're chosen. You live in mercy and grace. If you're worshiping alone here today, solo, flying solo this morning, I want you to say to yourself, that's me. That in Jesus Christ, our cornerstone, who has come and given everything on the cross, who everything then after life in Jesus, in this world and in our lives, is something different that you, as a child of God, called through the waters of baptism, you, you are chosen, a royal priesthood, a nation, given in God in his grace and mercy, called out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's you. There's no greater news for you and I. And as we gather here today, you know, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure that I would say, God, please send a pandemic so that we can learn some important lessons. I'm not sure if I would ask for this, but I certainly can be thankful now that the Lord has given us an experience that changes our perspective, that helps us see things that are old and normal new and fresh, to have our building, to have our traditions, to have our expectations of what church is and isn't, to all stripped away and to magnify and to raise up in our midst, Jesus Christ, the cornerstone on which this spiritual house of faith, you and I as his church is built. I give thanks to God for that experience, even as I long to be back with all of you. Amen? And we pray. Almighty God, your word is cast like seed into the ground. Now let the dew of heaven descend and righteous fruit abound. Amen. We continue our worship by greeting each other in the name of the Lord. Uh, today, as you worship in your home, you'll have opportunity to greet those whom you're worshiping with. If you're worshiping solo today, take a moment maybe to call someone, text. You can always hit pause on the, on the computer or your phone and take a moment to do that. If you have a mom, make sure that you especially bless her today on Mother's Day. Uh, wish her God's peace and, and be give thanks to, to your family. So we continue this time in worship. A little bit of music we'll play here and we'll greet each other in the name of the Lord.
We continue our worship then this morning with giving thanks to the Lord by giving him the very best portion of which he's given us our first fruit offerings, laying the, these at his feet, which today you won't be able to do here in the sanctuary. But uh, thank you to all of you who have been mailing in your offerings, have been stopping by the church. Now the office is open from nine to two. If you wanna drop by and ring the doorbell and drop off your offerings. And thank you, thank you to all of you who have signed up for joyful response. If you're a guest with us here in worship today, uh, please give your first fruit to the Lord in your home congregation. Let the service here today be a gift to you. We honor the Lord with our first fruits. I invite you to join with me in a word of prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for the strengthening of our faith and giving guidance to our lives through this worship service. We ask you to bless our lives as we attempt to live them for you. We would also pray for those dealing with various challenges in their lives, particularly those we now name in our hearts. We ask that you watch over them, bless them, give them strength and comfort and patience. We also would pray at this time for those dealing with the various issues of the coronavirus. We would pray that you would take care of the medical teams. We pray that you be with the patients. We pray that you would continue to give them strength and comfort as you seek, as you also would heal them. Lord, we also thank you for the many blessings which you give to us, but particularly remember blessings of parents, particularly mothers today, and we ask that you be with them, and we thank you for the great gift and what they've meant for our lives. We ask you also to guide those who are dealing with, our leaders who are dealing 
with the pandemic. And we pray you guide them as they seek once more to bring us back to a no more normal way of life. All of these prayers we bring before you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has also taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, I invite you to receive his benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. At this time, I invite you to join in our next hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, hymn number 770. Thank you for joining us today for our worship at home at Zion Lutheran Church. We're pleased to offer these opportunities to you. Uh, it continues. Uh, we'll have 8 o'clock worship on the radio on KDLM, 1340 AM, and also 93.1 FM. And on Zion's YouTube, you can also watch the services. Uh, you can subscribe to that through zionlutherandl.org. Uh, if you'd like to have individual private communion, that opportunity is offered to you simply by calling Pastor Guy Roberts at 218-850-1239. Further announcements will be shared shortly.
Mr. Senior Pastor here with a few announcements and updates. There are not a lot really for us to share this week. Life has kind of uh, settled into some sort of normal here for us. Um, but today we celebrated a worship service out in the parking lot as well as here online. And uh, just not sure if we're going to be doing that again. Hopefully we'll be able to resume worship sooner than later. But we might do another parking lot service as the weeks kind of unroll. So stay tuned for that. Discipleship Hour, uh, you can definitely be a part of that on Zoom, 9.15 on Sunday mornings. encourage you to check that out. Um, also listen to Ask the Pastors. It's a chance to kind of learn and grow together on the radio, KDLM 1340 and 93.1 uh, FM. And so you can tune into that. And uh, as life goes on, just continue to know that you're being prayed for. And, and if you need anything, please let us know. If you'd like to schedule communion, you can do that with me. My phone number is 218-850-1239. There is one thing, though, that I'd like to kind of show you. It's, I've taught many of you of this over the, the last couple years. Um, but the office is open on Monday through Wednesday, 9 to 2. You can, it's open by phone call or appointment. And if you drop by, there's a, a doorbell out front during the office hours if you would like to drop off your offerings. Um, I want to show you how to do that. You come in and you can drop your offerings here in this box. And that's where they go, kind of a safe box for this. It's right here outside of the office. Um, that's just in, as we learn for the future, that box is for any kind of money that you bring. We'll be asking you to put it there in that box. So... I think that's all. If you have any questions, concerns, prayers are needed for anyone, for you or anyone in your family, please contact us. The Lord's uh, richest blessing upon your week. Have a blessed week in the Lord.